topic today. The title is Perfect Sacrifice and Offering. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, an offering, it is something that you offer before the Lord. An offering is something that you offer before the Lord. And also a sacrifice is something that you sacrifice. Something that you dedicate to give to the Lord. Something that you have sacrificed, you have, you are willing to give it to the Lord. That is what we call a sacrifice. And it, it comes inside your heart. It is not as something that you are being forced, but it's something that you are, you give willingly. Hallelujah. Amen. And sacrifice, they do have cost. Like how Jesus Christ was given to us as a living sacrifice. So, it was the cost, that was the cost of Christianity. There is a cost in sacrifice. There is a cost when you are sacrificing. There is a cost when you are offering. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the meaning of sacrifice and that is why we want to see how we can worship God in the perfect sacrifice and even offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us read in the book of Leviticus 1.3 Leviticus 1.3 Leviticus 1 3. If we would want to understand about the perfect sacrifice, we can only uh, go back to the Old Testament to go and to see and to know deeper meaning about the sacrifice and the offering, how we should offer to the Lord. Leviticus 1 3. Leviticus 1 3. Uh, the Bible says this. Verses 1, starting 1. Now the Lord called Moses and spoke to him from the tabernacle of meeting, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When, one, when any one of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the frog, of the herd, and of the frog. If his offering is a burnt sacrifice, of the heart, let him offer a man without blemish. He shall offer it of his own free will at the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Mighty Jehovah, the King of glory, we glorify you every day. We pray, Lord, that you may dedicate your word, O God, your spirit, that Lord, as we minister, as we hear your word, you will give us understanding, knowledge, wisdom in the name of Jesus. We understand you by honoring our revelation. Impart our operation over the heart of your people in the name of Jesus that we may begin, O oh Lord, being unfolded, unfolding the kingdom of God, the secret of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. I will say that if if he is offering us a burnt sacrifice of head, let him offer a meal without blemish. He shall offer it to his own free will will at the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord. So the first thing that you see here, that he shall offer that offering or that sacrifice at his own free will. You shall offer at your own free will. If it is a sacrifice, you shall offer at your own free will. It is something that you are not forced. It is something that you are not forced to do. There is no one who is forcing you or pressing you to do that thing. But you are offering it in an Free will. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is an offering. Then another thing is that without blemish, you see, without blemish, you must worship, uh, you must bring that thing without blemish. Let him offer a man without blemish. Hallelujah. Amen. So here we see that the Lord is speaking about perfect sacrifice without blemish. Without blemish and also with a free will. Hallelujah. Amen. When we come to the house of the Lord, Know that when they have the, in the house of God or the temple, in every altar there is offering. In every altar or in every temple there is offering, there is free will in every altar. And there is also on, uh, sacrifice and offering. Is there any altar whereby there is no offering? Even the, offer, uh, the, the temples or the altars of the devil, there is offering there. And there is also sacrifice. You see? So, in the house of God, there are also sacrifices. There are also offerings. And those are the things that connect us with God. If you do not offer, 
You do not connect yourself with God. If you do not sacrifice, you do not connect yourself to God. And how can you make that your altar or your temple to be strong? Or that covenant cannot be made strong unless you offer, unless you sacrifice. That covenant cannot be perfect. That covenant cannot be strong. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you are offered to the covenant, when you offer, you make the covenant to be strong. When you offer, when you sacrifice, you make your covenant to be strong. You make the temple of God, even the, uh, your, your life to be strong. Because Moses was commanded by God that when they are offering, the part offering, let them uh, offer a man without a blemish. He shall offer without any, without a blemish. Meaning a man that has no any blemish, any blemish, any defect, any sickness, something that is pure, something that is holy, something that is perfect before the Lord. That is how we should worship God. That is how we should offer to God something that is holy, something that is without defect, something that is without blemish. Amen. Amen. Because an altar it is somewhere that you connect with your God. Hallelujah. Amen. An altar it is somewhere that you connect, you connect with your God. It is somewhere that the heaven is open. Somewhere that the doors are open to you. Amen. Amen. And in the temple, it is somewhere that there is, there is uh, the sacrifice, there is the offering. Hallelujah. Amen. So those things are one. For there is no temple without offering. Or there is no altar without offering. Or there is no temple without sacrifice. For that is what brings the covenant and the strong, the strongness, uh, the greatness of that altar. It is all about worship. Amen? Amen. When you are finding or searching for, a, or, or, or for an altar to worship, you go and pray that they worship God. Why do you search such, such kind of a, uh, an altar? It is because there is an offering somewhere. There is an offering, a strong offering that is being worshipped. Hallelujah. Amen. The way you hear, it is an offering. You go there because they, they take the offering of God, a holy offering, a holy worship before God. Amen. Amen. And that is how it means by perfect sacrifice before God. Hallelujah. Amen. Perfect sacrifice, perfect offering before God. We want to learn about this. Let us go in the book of Leviticus 22:17. Leviticus 22, 17. And then you shall understand more about why is God always commanding the children of Israel to offer this kind of sacrifice, to offer this kind of offering that is defect, without defect, blemish. Why? Because it is a, he is a perfect God. He is a perfect God. And he wants us to be perfect. Like he is also perfect. Amen. Like how Jesus Christ offered his son. He offered the best of the best. He offered the only of the only. So also when we are offering, we need to give out the best of us. Hallelujah. The best that we have. Not defined. Not something that is uh, something that without strength. Something that is, uh, is defective or have the blemish. But the perfect offering before God. Amen. Yeah. Ah. Leviticus 22 verses 17. And I am reading now. Here, you shall hear now what God is saying. Offering accepted and not accepted. You hear? And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his son and to all the children of Israel and say to them, Whatever a man, whatever man, man of the house of Israel or the stranger in the Israel who offer his sacrifice for any of his vow, for any of his free will offering, which they offer to the Lord as a burnt offering, you shall offer you shall offer of your own free will a man without blemish again from the cattle, from the sheep, or from the goat. You see, a man without blemish. And then, but whoever has a defect, you shall not offer, for it is not accepted to you to, on your behalf. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. You see that whoever have that man which is defective, and if you go to God and, and take that thing, that that offering that is defective. Defective means something that is not complete, something that is not uh, good or healthy. Hallelujah. Something that is not healthy. You can say that this.
this man has a defective eye. The eye has a problem. You see? So he's saying that if you offer an offering which is not uh, which is has the defective, God would accept it here. Yeah. But whatever whatever has a defect, you shall not offer, for it shall not be accepted on your behalf. You see? For God will not accept that thing that does not have uh, that is not a, uh, pure, that thing that is not perfect, that thing that is not holy in the sight of God. Hallelujah. So that means when we are offering any worship, when we are offering anything unto the Lord, we must offer it something that is without defect, something that is, is without breaks, something that does not have any condemnations. Hallelujah. Something that is holy before the Lord, something that is pleasing before the Lord. Hallelujah. The things that you love the most, give it to the Lord. Amen. Amen. That thing that you care most, that thing that you uh, that you consider to be, to be the best of you, give to the Lord. That is what God is saying. And He said that He will not accept any offering or any offering that has a defect. Why? Praise the name of the Lord. Why? God will not accept it. Because he is a holy God and he wants us to, to offer something that is, uh, it is perfect before his sight. Amen. Amen. Again, let us continue. And whoever offers a sacrifice of peace offering to the Lord to fulfill his vow or free will offering from the cattle or the sheep, it must be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no defect in it again. You see? It should be perfect. To be accepted, there shall be no defect in it. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see, they were also offering an offering of peace, an offering or even to fulfill the vow. Give it in a free will. Hallelujah. Amen. There are people who have a vow or who have a promise before the Lord. The Bible says that fulfill your vow, fulfill your promises before the Lord. There are people who might have uh, promised God for something. Just fulfill your vow, and when you are fulfilling your vow, do it freely. Freely. Hallelujah. Amen. Freely and willingly. Give to the Lord. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. When there are people who give to the Lord, but they give when they are still complaining, when they, like they are being forced, it is because of, I promised the Lord, so I must do this. You see, God wants us to give him the perfect one, and also willingly and in freely. Hallelujah. Amen. For he said that it must be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no defect in it. Amen? Amen. That is the God that we worship. He's not the God that receives the defective thing. He's not the God that receives things that are sick, things that do not have st strength. He is not a God that receives those things that we, 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 we cannot even allow them. He needs those things that we love. He needs, he wants those things that are perfect. Hallelujah. He wants those things that are smart. Those things give him to him. Amen. He's a smart God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a perfect God. So give him the perfect one. He does not have any defective. He does not have any sickness. So give him all the best, the perfect one without any blemish. And he will accept it. Hallelujah. Amen. For if you give him something that is not uh, holy, something that is uh, with preps, therefore, you see, you will not be accepted. And that is why you see that there are people who offer to God, but God detests those offerings. God do not accept them. God hates them. Hallelujah. You go, you just offer, but the God, when, it just, when you offer, God does not even consider it. And before him, he rejects that thing, you see. So we must understand what God needs so that we, may, we might not offer in vain. Hallelujah. What we offer, may we offer that something that is accepted before God. When we come to the house of God, it is a house of worship. It is a house of offering. It is a house of sacrifice. Whatever we sacrifice before God, let it be accepted because we shall know the secret today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's continue. Those that are blind, those that are blind or broken or maimed or have an asa or asthma or scabs. <laughs> you shall not offer to the Lord not make an offering by fire of them on the altar to the Lord those that are blind a son that is blind you see that if your sheep is blind does not see, don't take it to the Lord 
If you have a head that does not have a, a, an eye or does, has, that has a maimed leg, an injured leg, don't take it and say, ah, oh, let me see. You see, this one is maimed, so I, go, I will go to take the road. Who told you? God wants those things that are maimed, those things that have wood, those things that have injuries and have injuries. God is perfect, so give him the perfect thing. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, there are things that you, even you yourself, you cannot receive as a gift. But you go to the Lord and you give him. Things that you can be given as a gift, you cannot receive them. What is somebody giving you things that are defying? Things that does even not see. Surely, you say that this, I have a surprise. This is the gift I am giving to you. Something that is named. A head that, a head that does not, or a chicken that does not have eye. Even the legs. A disabled one. How would you feel? How would you feel? Huh? Would you accept it? That is a cast thing. And so, God would accept that thing that is defined, that thing that is maimed or bride. He bride. He wants that thing that is holy, perfect, without blemish. Amen. Amen. Here are the three. Either a bull or a lamb that has any limb too, long or too short, you may offer as a free will. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, you may offer that thing, but you cannot offer as an offering. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Even a, a bull, if it has any rib, too long or too short, you may something that is is it is not normal. Huh? Something that is not normal, you are taking it to the road. Because it's not normal. Just you just clean out your house and see today what what will I go to the road with? And you just suffer out something that is not normal. Something that is weak, something that is not perfect. And you go to the road to give him. You see, sometimes we make uh, the offering of the Lord as a garbage. Mm. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. We make us a garbage when we go to the Lord and offer something that is not uh, 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 it's not pure. It is not perfect before the Lord. That is garbage before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That is garbage. And in the house of God, we should not bring garbage. We should not take garbage in the house of the Lord. Rather, we should take those things that are perfect. Hallelujah. Amen. You should take those things that are holy, those things that are whole in themselves. Not things that are half, not things that are not completed, not things that are disabled, but things that are holy, things that are healthy. If you take those things that are healthy, the Lord shall bless you and he will not uh, reject that kind of a sacrifice. He will not reject that kind of an offering. Hallelujah. Yeah. No. From any. And then, you shall not offer to the Lord what is bruised or crushed or torn or cut. You see? What is bruised, bruised or crushed or torn or cut. Nor shall you make any offering of them in your land. Why? It is like cursing the Lord. When you are offering an offering which is not holy, which is not perfect, which is uh, which is uh, is bruised or which has wound, which is not uh, perfect for the Lord. It is like cursing God. Receive this, Hallelujah. Amen. Let us give God the perfect of the perfect. Let us give God the whole, the whole thing, <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Not something that is uh, is the, a is a something that ha does not have the the the, str uh, the strength. But something that has the strength. Don't look for that thing that is falling because it does not have the strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God the perfect one. The best one. And that is why God requires that you give him all the firstborn. Why? Why do we give all the firstborn to the Lord? Yes, because we love them the most. And also because they are the strong. They are the strength of your youth. Hallelujah. They are the strength of your youth. The, the first born, they have the strength of your youth. They are the first fruit. They are the most loved one. And then they are the all they are they are they are also the one that inherit the most large part. Because they are the one that are the first. So God wants that thing that you love the most. 
God loves that thing that is respected. That thing that you consider as fast. That thing that has the strength. You are fast born. Have the strength. Amen? Amen? And that is why you see that God is rejecting all other things. Because he wants us to put him at first. Bible says, put God first. You see? Put always God first. Whatever that you have, put God first. Do not just measure like this and you see that I will give him the, the, the rest part or the, 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 break, the remaining part, but I will give him the first part. Hallelujah. Amen. You see? Now, now from any foreigners, how shall you offer any of those as a bread of your God? Because their corruption is in them. You see? Because their corruption is in them. And defects are in them. They shall not be accepted to your on your behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. They shall not be accepted. And these things, we are speaking these things because we want to run how we can worship our God. We want to run how we can go before the Lord. You know, in those days of old, there were only uh, specific people, specific chosen people, the priests, the rabbis, who are just around to go and offer to the Lord. And we see in those days, there are those who offered a defiant sacrifice or a defiant offering, and some of them were even killed. Why? Because of offering, an, an offering that is not uh, perfect. So they were punished. You see? So we need to know those things. Because in these days, we have become the rabbis to serve the Lord. We have become the priesthood. The Bible says that you are a chosen people. You are chosen people, royal people, priesthood of the Lord, to serve the Lord, to glorify Him, and to give Him all the glory. So, as you are running these things, you are running on your behalf. And if you run them, you will know which type of offering, which type of sacrifice that you take before your God. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why God is saying, but whatever has a defect, you shall not offer for it shall not be accepted on your behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, let us go in the book of Malachi. Malachi chapter 1, verses 8. Malachi chapter 1, verses 8. I am still laying the foundation of this, of this teaching. I am still laying the foundation of, of this teaching. So, I want you to write those. Malachi. 1-8 And I'm reading uh, The title for that title It is Polluted Offering Polluted Offering You see, there are things that are called Polluted Offerings And you shall know them As a son honors, honors his father And a servant his master If then I am your father Where is my owner? You see? And if I am a master, where is my leprance? Says the Lord of hosts, do you please? Yes. Who despise my name? Yet you say, in what way do we despise your name? Hallelujah. I told you you are a priesthood of God. You are a royal priesthood generation of God. Seven. You offer defined food on my altar. But you say, in what way do we, do we do offer? Then he said, the table of the Lord is contemptible. And when you offer the bride as a sacrifice, is it not evil? Hallelujah. Amen. When you offer us a bride as a sacrifice, is that not evil? That is evil before the sight of God. That is why he's saying that as a father, as if I am your father, where is the, the owner of the father? If I am a master, where is the reverence of the master? Amen. Amen. So when you offer a despised sacrifice, is that, that is evil before the Lord. When you offer it, when you offer it, when you offer it, you, that is evil. It is cursing God. It is insult to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, offer it then to your governor. Offer it to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? No. That thing that is bride, would you offer it to your governor? 
Would you offer it to uh, to, the, to an MP or to a certain leader politician? Go take him that a bride donkey or that bride uh, sheep. Would he take it? He would take it. And why would you offer that thing to the Lord, the Church of God? Why those things that are defied are them that are been to the Lord? Are them that are being uh, uh, taken to the Lord? That is evil. Offer it, he said, says the Lord of hosts. But now entreat God's favor that he may, he may be gracious to, to us. When this is being done by your hand, will he accept your favor? Says the Lord of hosts. Ten. Who is there even among you? Who would shut the door so that you would not kind of fire on my altar in vain? I have no pressure in you, says the Lord of hosts. No, I will accept an offering from your hand. You see? He says that he will not accept it. He has no favor in them. Because they are offering a defiant offering before the Lord. A defiant worship before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This is just laying on foundation of what we are coming to see. For from the rising of the sun, even to its going down, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. In every place in, and incense shall be offered to my name. And pure offering, pure offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall be offered to the Lord. For my name shall be great among nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you profane it in that you say, the temple of the Lord is defined and its fruits, food is contemptible. You also say, oh, what weariness, and you sneer at it, says the Lord of hosts. And you bring the stolen, the lame, and the sick. Hallelujah. What an evil thing is this that the God is saying? That he sneer at it, sneering at the offering. He cannot accept a defective. He cannot accept that unholy offering before him. That gift because it has been defiled. Hallelujah. Amen. The kind of worship we bring to the Lord, don't sneer it. We shall come to see those things that make our worship, those things that make our, our sacrifice, those things that make our gift to be sneer and on. We shall come to see them. And he said, But cast be the deceiver who has a frock of mail here. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. Says the Lord of hosts. And you bring the stolen, the rain. You see, bringing stolen things in the house of God. Praise the name of the living God. And that is what you are seeing today. Even in the churches today. That even some of the politicians, they are going to the house of God. And they are offering an offering that they have stolen from the Kenyans. Uh, an offering that is corrupted. Corruption, money. They are taking them to the house of God as an offering. That is an, a gift. That is an offering that has been smeared. Hallelujah. Amen. An offering that has been smeared or a defiant offering before God. That is why he say, you shall not take any stolen thing in the house of God. For that thing will make you to be cast instead of to be present by God. Amen. If you know that your money is for stealing, don't take it to the Lord. If you know that what you are doing is not pleasing God, don't take it to the Lord or don't give the servant of God. If you know the kind of the work that you are doing, it is not glorifying the Lord, don't take it to the Lord. There are people who are prostituting themselves. They are prostitutes, and when they get money, they go and try in the house of God. That is a smeared. Something that has been sneezed on. Something that has been sneezed on. That is not holy before the sight of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot take that thing to the Lord. It is the abomination to take that thing that is defied before the house of God. Other people, they know where and they have gotten their money. They have not gotten the money in a holy way. They ride in order to get, to get that money. Then you go to the house of God and you, and you take it. You do not receive a blessing, but you receive a curse before God. You do not receive any reward. God reject it. God reject it. And I pray in the name of Jesus that in this altar there shall be nothing that is defined that shall be offered here in the name of Jesus. Amen. We shall not defy the altar of the Lord. For what the devil does, and the way, uh, the, the way and how they are trapping many servants of God, 
It is bringing something that is defined before the order of God. Something that is evil. Bringing in the satanic money in the house of God. And when they bring that thing, then the altar will be just will just fall. The altar of the Lord will be destroyed. The presence of God will be free. Because the altar has been defiled. The altar has been defiled. So the, the, presence of, the presence of God, the righteousness of God will go away with free. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why we see that God is saying, you shall not take those, you shall not bring stolen thee, the lame, the sick, thus I'll bring them as an offering. Should I accept this from your hand? No. Hallelujah. Amen. Something that is sick, something that is lame, something that is disabled, something that you have stolen, don't take it to the house of God. Because that is an offering that is defied. An offering that does not glorify God. There are people who do work and in their job is not pleasing God. Some are selling even alcohol. Some are, are selling alcohol and beer. Something that is abomination before God. And those money that they receive, they are cast money. Because for them to receive that money, they have, they have destroyed even the family of those people. By selling those uh, drugs, by selling those beers, they have destroyed ma they have destroyed marriages by alcohol. You see, they are the reason why even divorces are being done because of destruction. Open th opening that bar, so you get that money and you bring it to the Lord. The Lord has rejected. God has rejected such a thing. It is not holy before Him, and there is no reward in such a thing. Even if you bring a million that is defied, that million would be accepted by God. Sure. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It is better that you bring that one shilling that is accepted than to bring that one million that is defied. Oh, yes. God would God would need that thing. Amen. It is defied. It is unholy. It is imperfect. It is something that is not perfect. Defied. Amen. And God wants us want He want us. To, to, to be perfect because he is perfect and so bring something that is perfect mm -hmm. something that does not have any corruption Amen. something that you have worked it out with your own hand Amen. something that you have sweat because of that thing that is what God said he said that I will press the work of your hand Amen. not that I will press the, the, the stolen thing mm -hmm. he will press the work of your hand he will press that thing that you have sweat because of that thing Amen. that is where God will press Amen. 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 And he said, he said this here, the red you shall. 14, as I concluded this. But cast be the deceiver who has his frog a male and makes a vow, but sacrifice to the Lord what is blemish here, what a wicked thing that they were doing. <laughs> huh? For I am a great king, say the Lord of hosts, and my name is to be feared among all nations. Hallelujah. That cast is that, that deceiver. Cast is that deceiver. Who deceives the Lord? Mm. Somebody makes a free will. Somebody makes a vow before the Lord. Oh, yeah. And you see what he do? Who has his frog a male and makes a vow but sacrifice uh, to the Lord that he, which is blemish. You see? Mm. You, you, you have in your, in, your, in your house or in your kettles or your frog, you have all those things. You have the perfect one, but you, you go and offer to the Lord that thing that is defied, that thing that is maimed, that thing that is injured. Hallelujah! Amen. That thing that has uh, uh, this kind of diseases that we, the Lord is speaking about them. Asas, some of the animals that are shedding their, their, their skin because of uh, some kind of a, of a disease. What you? Hallelujah! Amen. That is the kind of disease, a kind of a disease that you see that if it is a sheep, it, it is start falling. The, 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 the skin is falling. Huh? Those four are, are, are falling. Then you take it, that thing to the house. You are a deceiver before the house of God because God knows that you have the perfect one. God knows that you have them that are not sick, but you go, you bring that that is sick, you are a deceiver. And the Bible says, Cast is you because you have deceived the Lord. But the Lord knows that He has given you the perfect one. He knows that the, you have the first, the, the first fruit, the first born there, but you have not given Him. You want to give Him that thing that is rust, that thing that does not have the, uh, the strength? 
Hallelujah. Amen. Let us give God the perfect thing and God will bless you perfectly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For that is what God needs us to worship him in the beauty of righteousness and in the beauty of perfectness. Blessed are those who know the secret of, of giving their own the perfect thing. Blessed are those that know how to worship God and to give him all the best and all that is holy and perfect because they receive it in reward. Amen. They shall receive in reward. But the deceivers, those that, uh, that, 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 that steal from the Lord and those that deceive God, they shall not receive anything but only a curse. That will go the same. Imagine, as there was a time in, the, in, in Malachi's age that they were offering a defied worship, even today they are now def uh, they are now uh, offering a defined worship before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And now let us go to our topic now. Let us go now to the main reason why I decide to speak this and why the Spirit of God is speaking about this. Now, as there is an offering that they offered, now also when we come to the house of God, whatever that you do, you should not offer a blemish offering. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. I want to say, Three things that you should not offer to God. Three things that you should not offer to God. And I will cross the topic. The first thing is blemish offering. Blemish offering before God. What is blemish offering? It is something that has the brains. You see, something that has the brains. You should not offer it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You should serve without the brains. Now the offering, we said it is anything that you give to the Lord. As you came today, or as you worship the Lord, know that when you are serving the Lord, you are giving Him an offering. Hallelujah. Amen. When you are singing here, you are giving Him an offering. When you are dancing here, you are giving Him an offering. Oh, yes. So you should not give something that is brevish, a worship that is brevish, or a kind of a something that is brevish, that anybody is pointing, look at her. Now look at how she is singing. Is this she, how she is singing? We know her. We know today that she is not singing. We know she is singing like she has the mood. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> when you sing in those mood, you are singing, it is a blemish offering before the Lord. Don't offer anything that has blemish over the Lord. It is better you say, today I am not well, I will not worship. That to go to worship at the house of God with the blemish worship or with the blemish song. Hallelujah. Amen. We must be perfect like God is perfect. Let us worship in the perfectness of God. Amen. Serve without those brains. Amen. That is why I'm speaking about it. Because today churches, they are serving God in brains. Serving God, but he's serving God when he's still in sexual sin. Serving God when he's still resting there at the church. Serving God when he's still in lying. You see? In lying, pride. Those are the things that are happening in today's churches. Somebody is serving the Lord and saying that I'm a worshiper, but he is in sin. She is singing. She is worshiping God, but she is being blamed. Outside, she is being blamed. Some, they are being blamed even of rape. But when they go to the house of God, they, they are the now ministers of God and they are preaching. Preaching when you have blemish, that is not accepted. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if you can convert how many people, that is not still accepted. They will follow you. They will be other rapists. Following you. Following under your anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God has sent a perfect offering before God. Whatever you do, you must serve God without praise. You serve here. You do good. But how about those that are outside? How about your family? How do, you, how do they say whom you are? They are still blaming you. Some are being blamed. Huh? My son is a disobedient, he is a disobedient, he is a lie. He keep on lying me that he will come, he will visit us, he keep on lying me. My daughter is a lie. You see? So you are serving God, but outside there, some people are blaming you. Even your parents, they are blaming, blaming you. You see? Some, when you go even to your work, they are blaming you that there is something that has been stolen, we don't know who stole that thing. They are blaming you that you stole that thing. But when you come here, you claim you are worshipping God. That is offering a blemish offering before God. Amen. God will, will not accept your offering. God will not uh, accept your offering. That is why he said, 
That if you come to the house of God, if you know that there's somebody that you you are not speaking with, or somebody that you are you have you have uh, you have corrected with, therefore go just just uh, put your offering there. Then just go immediately and make well with that man. Then come back now and offer. And it doesn't say that put now the offering and go. Don't put the offering. The Bible says, just take it there at the door. Put somewhere there at the door. Some of there. <laughs> then when you finish to make peace with your neighbor, to make peace with your sister or brother, then come and offer. Why? It is because God wants a perfect offering, a blemish offering before him. Hallelujah. Amen. When we worship the Lord, let us worship God without anger in our heart, without pride in our heart. Without a, a revenge spirit, without any kind of a spirit, a anger and bitterness and forgiveness. When you come to worship God, worship God when you are holy, perfect, when you have you do not have all those things in your heart, when you are clean and pure. God will never detest any pure sacrifice. God will never reject any pure sacrifice or any pure offering. What that is offered by those that have pure heart. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why you will not come to the house of God and just offer it that as issue. You need to consider what you are doing. Because you see the Lord is saying that there is a blessing in the house of God or a curse in the house of God. So the way we worship God, the church, and they should be changed. The way we worship God, they are even you that are abroad, and they should be changed. You find that they are worshiping God like they are worshiping men. People are worshipping, but they are worshipping without the fear of God. They are pastors, but they do not have the fear of God. They are cheating. They are deceiving. Some are even in adultery. They are divorcing and remarrying. When they still they are serving in the Lord, that kind of a offering, that kind of a worship, God has rejected it. He won't allow that thing in his church. As he said in the, in the days of Malachi, that he will not accept any defined worship. Even in this age, he cannot receive them. Yes. So you better change the way you worship God. You better change the way you worship God, the way you serve him. The way you come to, you come to the house of God and the way you praise God, when you are praising God, you should be holy. You should present yourself holy before the sight of God. They are worshiping the Lord, but they are still being brimmed. Brimmed of seducing men. Why they are they brimmed, brimmed? Because they are going, they are going to the house of God with miniskirt, with tight cloth, immoral cloth that are revealing their body part. And when they are worshiping God, Satan is brimming them of rust. Satan is brimming them of defying men in the church, of defying women in the church because of seduction. Seducing men where they are worshiping. They say that they are praying, they are intercessors, but they are in immoral, immoral clothing and fashion. That kind of a worship, God has rejected it. Because they are brave, they are brains. You are clothed, they have brains. The way they dress, they have brains. And the devil is blaming them of seducing men. The devil is, uh, is blaming them of seducing men, and that is equals adultery. The Bible says that whoever looks at a woman and lusts at her, that man has already committed adultery with her. Oh, yes. So if you are a worshiper, or if you are a minister, or if you are whoever, that you are worshiping God as a Christian, but your clothes are defiling, and they are showing body parts, those bo uh, your body or your fashion, they are leading men to lust. And whoever asks at you, you commit adultery. So you are a prostitute. And the Bible says, no prostitute will enter the kingdom of God. No adultery will enter the kingdom of God. So it means that that kind of worship that you worship, even if you know how to offer, how to die, how to sing, like angel, God has rejected that offering. God has, God has rejected that kind of offering, that kind of singing. They are the people that know how to sing. They sing like angels. They sing like angels. But when you look at their ways, it's like devil. When you see and you look at their way, the way they walk, they are fruit. They are step and reading to hell. When they come here, they worship like they are worshiping God like angels. But they are step and reading men to hell. That 
that kind of singing, even if you can sing the whole world be touched, that kind of singing, it is rejected by God. Because it is something that is defied, blemish, something that is sick before the Lord, something that is injured before the Lord. Let us fear God and worship Him in the fear of holiness and righteousness. Amen. Amen. That is why He said that we are God and worship Him because the time of judgment is near. Amen. We should worship God in the perfect way, in the holy way, mm. without pleasing men, but pleasing God oh, that yeah. created the heaven and earth. Amen. For if we want to please men, we cannot please God. Amen. For if you want to be a lover of the world, you cannot be a, you cannot be a lover of God. You cannot walk with the Satan and walk with the devil or walk and walk with Jesus. Mm. Light and darkness, they do not have something in common. Amen. That is why when we walk and we worship the Lord, let us worship the Lord without holding things of this world. Mm. Those that are born again, they are separated from this world. Mm. And they are washed by the word of God. To be born again, it is to be separated from this world. Amen. To be born again, it is to be washed by the word of God. The word of God washes you and it, 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 it removes every defied. Everything that are brains of the world, the word of God will cleanse you. And you become a born again and a separated Christian from the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us be on fire of God to give him all the best. All the best of worship, and the Lord shall bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When we sing, let us sing to the Lord without any brains. When we worship the Lord, let us worship the Lord without any brains. When we preach the gospel, let us preach the gospel without any brains. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, you see, there are people who preach, but they do not preach in the right way. They preach that, but they pre they preach. With the insult. I had another preacher preaching, but he's, he's preaching when he's abusing people. Stupid! <laughs> I, I don't like that. He's preaching, but he's, he, he's, he's, he's insulting them. How can you preach, but you are insulting people? How can you insult the people? You need to preach the word of God and leave those insults. It means that that preacher needs deliverance from insult. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He isn't delivered from abuse. He is still delivered from abuse. Amen. So we need to, when we do everything, when we worship God, when we sing, when we pray, let us be blameless before the Lord. Amen. Why? There was a man who was called Joshua. And one time Joshua was accused by the devil. Was accused by the devil because of blames. The devil was accusing him and telling him that you have brains on your garment. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the kind of the worship that you worship. And I tell you, no one who does not worship God. If you are a worshiper of God, you are worshiping him. And you are offering some kind of offering every day, every day. So whatever you offer, it must be brainless. Jo uh, Joshua was accused because of those uh, spots on his garment. But God defended him. And the angel said that uh, Satan rebuke you, uh, uh, God rebuke you, Satan. You see? Can God defend you on those brains, seeing that you repented, seeing that you changed those brains? We know that uh, when we are, were living in the world, we had many brains. But when you receive Jesus, those brains, they were crescent by God through the blood of Jesus. But there are people who those brains are still following them because they are still doing them in sacred place. And so when you say, no, I used to do those things, the devil just stand and say, no, 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 even today you are still doing those things. See? Brains, we must be brainless when we are worshiping the Lord and God will receive that kind of, of offering as it is. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us read the book of Psalms 119. As you see that we need to offer a, bre a, 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 a brainless offering before the Lord. For that is what God is. For he is brainless. And you see that he commanded in the time of old that they should 
take or bring that calf or that male or anything, that animal, without brains, a perfect, because he's a perfect God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when he blesses you, he blesses you in a perfect way. 119. 119. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Listen. Blessed are the undefined in the way who walks in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that blessed are the undefined in the way. Maybe your Bible says blessed are the blameless in their way. Hallelujah. Amen. So blessed are those that are undefined. Blessed are those that offer something that is not undefined, but something that is holy, something that is perfect. Blessed are those who offer to the Lord something that is, uh, does not have any brims. Amen. Amen. For that is what God wants us to worship him and to give him all the best. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you are worshiping the Lord, when you are serving the Lord, serve the Lord and give him the best. Be perfect. Give him the best one. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why we cannot just consider God like he's a poor God. God is not poor. You see what he said in, the, in Marakai? That you should fear me. I am the king. I am the king of the whole world. Of the, of the whole world. He is the one that is, is rich. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever you offer to him, he is the one who has given you. And you see, just, he just requires the first one. Or he just requires that 10%. The, the, the 100%. He is the one who has given you. So when you are giving him a sick or a man doing something that is blemished, don't consider God like he is very poor, that he don't have his, his own. What you have, you are his own. Hallelujah. Amen. So whatever you give him, you are returning just to, to, uh, to him. Hallelujah. Amen. What you give him, you are just returning, because you, you are of him. Whatever you have, you are of him. The bulls and animals and all other things, they belong to him. So God is just testing you and seeing if you can give him. Because all of these belong to him. If he want to take all those things, he will take all those things. Hallelujah. He will take all those things. And no one will, ask, will, will question him. Like what he did in the days of Job. Hallelujah. Amen. Another thing. Things that we should not offer to God. Defective offering. Defective offering. Or defect offering. Defect offering, and you say defect, it is something that has fault, something that has fault, or something that is not operating. If you can, if you can be given a phone, but the one that gives you a phone, the phone is not operating. He tells you that I have a gift, I want to give you a gift, but the phone is not operating. He gives you a defective uh, phone. You see, a phone with a fault, the phone is not charging. The phone does not even have camera. That is a gift. What about that? Hallelujah. It is something that is defective. Something that has fault. Something that is not complete. It is something that is disabled before God. Hallelujah. So now this one, it is you, you are giving. But give God something that does not have defective. Hallelujah. Amen. Offer the best thing that you have. Don't offer a sick, a sick animal. Don't offer a stolen animal or a stolen money. Mm. Don't offer those things that are, that are not holy, the corrupted things. Defective money. Don't. Hallelujah. Yeah. Even if it, it, is, it is a land that a land that you are offering to the Lord, a piece or a portion of the land that you are offering to the Lord, just offer the, the, the one that is good, the one that is, has the fertility. Don't just say, no, I have a land, yes, and you are giving us a land that is full of rock. Huh? That is what you are going to give the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That is a defective offering. Give him something that you know that it, you cannot even use you yourself. You don't like that thing, but you give to the Lord. That is a defective offering. You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can give us. When you can hear something, you have a car. You want to give to, to, to donate that car to the house of God for the ministry. But you are giving us. The car that has defective does not have even leg. You say, hey, uh, the, the rest you can make clear. The rest you can take to, to mechanic. Does not have study. 
You see, whether you have the best one, give the best one, and you see what God will give you. Amen. The Lord says that He blesses those that are perfect. He blesses those that offer a, a blameless offering. Mm. Eh? Amen. And like that, that He blesses those. He says, "Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walks in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep His testimony. Blessed are those who are blessed are the undefiled in the way." Don't offer something that is defiled. You will be blessed if you 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 offer something that is, that is best one mm. or the perfect thing. Amen. 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 The bride thing don't take don't don't take them to the house of God. Defective thing don't take it to the house of God. And you see the Bible say there in the book of Leviticus that anything that is crushed, you see, anything that is crushed, anything that is cut, anything that is injured. Anything that is has uh, wood, don't take it to the house of God. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. You see, if we can see those things, we can undermine those things and see that there are many things that we do without knowing, but God does is not pleased with those things. Hallelujah. Amen. There are some people who offer even those money that just the money that is they they am ze am ze not am ze ze sana. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Yeah, you're offering in the house of God. And then you see, you see uh, the kind of the money that you have. You look the one that is very old, the one that is very shaky with the money. Yeah. And then when you are offering it, you just you just crush it and squeeze it like uh, something like a tissue and you, you offer, you tap it to the road. As if you are offering, uh, as if this is a garbage box. On a table. You see? As if the garbage box where you can dump you can dump anything. Hallelujah. Amen. That is defective offering. When you are offering to the Lord, just do it very good. Stop squeezing. Stop squeezing. squeezing. Hallelujah. Amen. Just arrange this very well and know that you are offering it to the Lord and give him the best one. Mm. Don't just go there and start, just start searching the, the, the one that, uh, that is very old. Huh? Hallelujah. Amen. Let us do the perfect thing. Let us offer something that is not defective. Something that is glorifying in God. Amen. 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 You see, the Bible says that for those that are vowed something to the Lord, and they went to the Lord and they sacrificed or they offered a sick animal. But God knows that they have a hair of the animal. He said that those people are deceiving and they will receive a curse. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you have an offering, and you see that in the offering that you have all in your pocket, whatever you have, and you come here and you give out, you see that you have, maybe you have 2,000. Then you just say, ah, what do I have? You say, ah, I will not break 2,000. Then you just drop coin in the house of God. Is that not deceiving the Lord? It is deceiving the Lord. Why? Because God knows that you have the perfect one, but you cannot give him the perfect. You are just giving that the thing that you don't like and give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Give him the best one that you have without anything that does not have defective. Hallelujah. Amen. And you see, the Lord will bless you. For he said that whatever man man uh, uh, sows, the same that whatever he reap. You see? What you have is what you shall. What you what you plant is what you have harvest. Praise the name of the living God. That is why we must pick it because God will reject those kind of sacrifice before God. You see? There are people who give, but they give something that is not, is something that is, is, it is, it is unworthy. Even something that is unworthy that you cannot even imagine. Hallelujah. Amen. Imagine when we are going to the house of the Lord, when we are looking what, what is there in the house of the Lord, and then we see uh, there is a, a one shearing. A one shearing. In the offering. What do you see? What do you see? A one shilling. A one shilling that you have put a one shilling in the offering. If you do not have any other thing, it is well. But now this one shilling, for sure, the things that even we, we at the roadside, you cannot even pick a shilling. <laughs> but you are going to dump it in the house of the Lord. As if it has become a garbage where you can, you can, you can dump a shilling. But you cannot collect it at the roadside. Even when you can be given, you don't like it. You cannot take it, you cannot receive it. Even children of today, when you give them one shilling, they will look at you like this. They cannot receive it. They see that, ah, 
Hii ni manaro gani? You see? You, you see, they cannot receive, but you are going to take that thing in the house of God. Something that, that cannot even buy a sweet today. But you are giving to the Lord. But it's not that you do not have any other thing, but it's because you don't want to give. You just want to, to give. Just you just want to be to, to be seen that you have put something in, in that in that basket. It is good that you will not put something rather than to put a defective thing in the house of God. Amen. Because you will become cast by God. Amen. For God sees that you have, but you are doing this to discuss his work, to despise his work, or to despise his house or his temple. What is that that you are giving to God? Hallelujah. Amen. Let us give God things that are not sick, things that are not bright, these things that are not defective. Give him what you can, be, what you can like you yourself to be given. Yes. Not things that you cannot like you to be given. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not really speaking this because I have the love of money. I'm speaking this because I want to protect the word of God. Amen. That when you worship God, worship God without defective. Amen. Give him something, a sacrifice or an offering that is not defective. Something that does, does not have privilege if you need to be blessed by God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For the blessing of God, they need us also to be willing. Another thing is that when you are offering to the Lord, you need to offer that thing that you have made it in a free will. Without being forced by anybody, but do it with a pure heart, and the Lord shall bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need to do it in the perfect way. For God needs righteousness. He needs pureness. He needs also perfectness. So that the Lord may bless you. Things that you should not offer to God. Number three, the last one. Unwilling offering. Unwilling offering. Unwilling offering. And you see that all of those books that we have just read, they have said that uh, you, when you go to the, house, to the road, give it something that is free will. Freely give. Or something that is a free will. Nobody who have forced you to, to, uh, to give it to the road. Hallelujah. Amen. But give it to the Lord willingly. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, offering, the offering uh, there is many types of offering. Because even coming today in the church, it is a kind of offering. Sure? Yes. It's a kind of offering. Even praying, it is a kind of offering. When you go to a night of the vigil, it is a kind of offering and a sacrifice before God. Because you sacrifice your night and then you say, ah, I will be watchful and pray. You see? Mm. Whatever you do, it's a kind of offering. But what you offer, do it willingly. Yes. Don't come to Sunday or don't come to the house of God because you are being forced. Hallelujah. Ah. But do it willingly. But I know that this day it is the day of worshiping the Lord. And therefore, I want to worship Him. I have gone to the house of God because I am willingly. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't do this as if you are being pushed by somebody. Somebody is pushing you. Just let us go to the church. Let us go. Somebody is pushing you. Don't do it. Because that kind of offering will, know, will be rejected by God. You just come from all the way. You come. You receive the word of God. But God has not received your offering. Why? You are not willing. You are just forced to do those things. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to do things willingly. Willingly out of our heart. Amen? Amen. When you do things out of your heart, you will receive the blessing of the Lord. When you go even to the fellowship or to the prayers, without being forced by anybody, because you know the Lord needs to be worshipped, so you go to worship the Lord, and you go early, then you shall receive that blessing. Don't be like somebody who is being forced. Being forced to come to the house of the Lord. Being forced to speak, uh, uh, to worship God here. To sing for the Lord or to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Do all those things when you are willing of heart. Amen. Without being forced by anybody. And there you shall receive your blessing. Amen. 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 If you are singing, sing when you are willing. If you hear that the time has come for worship, just be willing to come over. 
be willing to come over and take control, take on the microphone and just do whatever you do. When you are willingly and when you are you are singing to the Lord, God will look at your willing heart and you will be blessed. Amen. 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 2 Corinthians 9, 6. About the willing. We hear what God says. God loves so much the cheerful giver, as he said. And why do, they, do he love them? Because they rejoice. They give him. And that is when you see that God does not even, uh, he does not even care so much about what you are giving, but he cares the type of a heart that you are giving with. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. He cares the type of a heart that you are giving with. For there was a woman in the Bible who offered the, 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 the there were two coins or two cents. Yeah. But his heart, her heart was very willing to give to the Lord. And she had, gave, she had given whatever that he, she had. And Jesus said that this woman had given all what was with her. You see? Without holding anything, she gave all him. Where others were giving some, some of their part, or very little of their part, her, she gave all that she had. So the Lord did not look upon the quantity, quantity of what he, uh, or the amount, but he what he looked upon his her heart. He look uh, he 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 presses a heart that is weary. Praise the name of the living God. And that is why that woman was blessed by the Lord. Because she was willing to give. Yeah, she is a sheer, cheerful giver. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. The Lord has a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's see. Yes. Yes, there are six. Bible says, But I say, he who so sparingly, uh, sp sparingly will also live sparingly. And he who sows uh, bountifully will also live bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of, necess of necessity. For God loves a chief giver. Hallelujah. Amen. You see? That when you are giving to the Lord, give it willingly. Hallelujah. Amen. For the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Who is a cheerful giver? The one that comes to the house of the Lord and he does not feel anything. You offer that you do not feel anything. You see, there are people who can give even their, their a large amount. But when they are giving a large amount, they are still complaining. Ah, you see, I have given that one. Ah, you see. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Lord loves cheerful giver. When you give anything that you give, whether it is large or a, or, 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 or a small quantity, you must give it in willing, in a, cheerful, in a cheerful way. You are not complaining. You have given the Lord, and you know the Bible says that those who give, those who give they give to the Lord. And the Lord will return them to them. Yes. The, the Lord will return it to them, those that you give. When you give it cheerfully, when you give it when you are happy, when you do not have anything in your heart. There are people who give but they, they, they have pain. So pain. I am giving, you are giving with a lot of pain. Ah, <laughs> Praise the name of the living God. Yes, complaining. With pain and complaining. You cannot receive that thing. Why? Because God, when God looks at it, see, oh, oh, you are giving to me, but you are complaining. I will not bless you. Because you are complaining. You are not a cheerful giver. And so the Lord would help, he would bless you. He will reject that kind of thing. So when you offer an willing offering, the Lord reject that thing. Hallelujah. And that is why I love. When I want, I want, I, I, I am pleasing all, all when I'm serving God. I want to be willing in the in the work of God. I don't want to be forced, oh, go preach, oh, go do this. Oh, I know that is my duty and I should do it willingly and I'm cheerful when I'm doing it because that is where I belong. Hallelujah. Yeah. But some of the people, they are, are like, they are being forced to serve their own. Mm. Ah, they are being forced, serve, uh, forced to serve them. They do not want. Mm -hmm. Take even too long to serve their own. Mm. Praise the name of the living God. Mm. 
Let us be willing when we are serving the Lord. And surely you shall receive your blessing. Amen. Be willing and be cheerful when you're doing the work of God. Amen. Knowing that He He bless, He rewards those that are cheerful. Amen. 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 Anything that you do, even if you are helping, help when you are a cheerful giver. Are you helping? Do it in a way that is very cheerful. Do it in a way that is pleasing God. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you offering? Or are you not donating? Or are you supporting? Support the work of God when you are in a cheerful giver and the Lord will bless you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those are the things that makes God to be angry and those are the things that makes God to reject many offerings, to reject many sacrifices, to reject the worship because that kind of worship, it is not whole. It is not pure. It is not perfect before the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Then when you are tithing, type it in your heart. Not being forced. If you are feeling that you are being forced, then don't do it. You won't be blessed. You won't receive a reward. You see? So just don't do it. It is like it is the same as not you have not doing. And you have not uh, provided. You see? So when you are doing anything, tithing or anything, offering. Do it when you are a cheerful giver. You know that when I find that, when I receive my salary or when I receive whatever God gives to me, my the first thing I give him is yeah, I give him that the it brought to the Lord. Very cheerfully and you give him. And you see that the Lord will bless you. He will bless you and he will reward you. Hallelujah. Amen. So do all those things and give the worship to the Lord. Worship that is not defined. Worship that does not have any defective. And the Lord shall bless you. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. You see, in this hour, the church of God, or the bride of Christ, whatever that we are doing, we are doing it for the kingdom of God. We are doing it for the kingdom of God. If I am serving, I am serving for the kingdom of God. If I am providing, I am providing for the kingdom of God. Whatever I am offering, whatever I am sacrificing, am I sacrificing my time? Am I sacrificing my whatever? I am doing all those things for the kingdom of, of God, for the purpose to enter the kingdom of God. Amen. For he said that the bride of Christ must be perfect. You see? The bride of Christ must be perfect. The bride of Christ must be holy. Without any blemish, without any spots, without any wrinkles. So, it means that whatever we worship as the bride of Christ, we need to be without spot. We need to be without any brains, either from the world or either even in your heart. You are praying, may praying yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us finish with Ephesians 5.26. Ephesians 5.26. And see what God is saying. That is the way and the truth. Ephesians 5.26 It speaks about the kind of the bride of Christ that God is saying. And he say Ephesians 5.26 5.26 The Bible says 25 I start Husband, love your wife just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the word of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or a wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. You see? Should be holy and without blemish. That is the kind of the church. That is the kind of the bride, bride that Jesus Christ is coming for. That is the kind of a wife of the Lord Jesus Christ that God, that Jesus Christ is waiting for. A bride that is holy, a bride that is perfect, a bride that used to offer a, a sacrifice or an offering that is perfect, an offering that was not blemished. Hallelujah. Amen. You offered the best that you can. You offered the, the time that you can when you are willing to serve God. Hallelujah. Amen. But when you look at the church today, you see that they do not know the God that they are worshipping. How they are worshipping says that they do not know the God that they are worshipping. And they do not know the bride uh, the bridegroom that is coming for them. 
Praise the name of the living God. There are people who look, uh, who look uh, like this. They see or they consider Jesus like the man of the world. Like the man of the world. So they are preparing as if they are preparing for the man of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. When you tell them, God is saying, prepare yourself for, the, for, for, for your husband Jesus Christ is coming. They start preparing with makeup, with makeup, with the dressing, with the immortal clothes and with the mini skirt, showing their body cleavage, showing their body parts. Who are they preparing for? Who are they preparing for? If that is not Jesus, what does that have to do with Jesus? When you are opening your priest, what, who is that kind of a Jesus that you are preparing for? It is like a ordinary man. You are preparing for ordinary men. Jesus is not coming to commit immorality with you. Jesus Christ is coming for a holy bride. Praise the name of the living God. A holy bride who is pure, who is righteous, who is mature, without any spot. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. While the church today, they are doing like as if they want to praise men. They are praising their body. As if they are praising men. As if they are, it is the ordinary, a ordinary man. That is coming for them to marry them. Jesus is not like a worldly man. Jesus is pure, he is perfect, he is holy, and in him there is no darkness. So if it's preparing for the Lord Jesus Christ, let us prepare without any blemish. Knowing that you belong to one man, Jesus Christ, without blemish. When you are walking, you are not walking seducing men. When you are walking, you are walking, uh, 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 preaching the kingdom of God by how you dress, by how you speak, by how you do all your things. You are pleasing God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Because the kind of the bridegroom that is coming is not a bridegroom like, like men of this world. Hallelujah. Amen. He's not a kind of man. He is Jesus Christ. He is perfect. And he's the one that died for you and me. So it is prepared, let us prepare in righteousness and in holiness with the truth and with the righteousness of God. Amen. Preparing without the blemish, offering an offering that is holy and accepted by God. For Jesus Christ is coming for his holy bride. Holy bride, without spotless, uh, without any spot, uh, with his, uh, who is spotless, without the blemish or wrinkle, who is glorious. Amen? Amen. Let us stand in our feet. The mighty name of Jesus. I want us to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I know that the Lord has spoken to you through that message. And I want us to tell the Lord to teach us how to offer for him. That there might be we are offering the Lord. We are, uh, we are praising the Lord, we are worshipping, we are serving the Lord. A kind of service that is not pleasing, a divine as seek worship before the Lord. Just repent before the Lord and tell the Lord to grace you, to purify you in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty Jehovah God, Lord Jesus Christ, we repent in the mighty name of Jesus. As the church of God, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, all worldwide, all where Jehovah, that there, there have been brevish worship. There have been brevish service as if we are worshiping to men. Oh God, help us to worship you. We repent for offering a defective, a brave, a, a, a brevish, oh God, offering and sacrifice before you. Worshiping and serving you, oh God, in a feeble way, in a wicked way. Lord, we repent in the name of Jesus. Forgive us and cleanse us in the name of Jesus. Purify us by the blood of Jesus. Wash us by your word and help us to worship you in the truth, in righteousness, in holiness, and in the way that is pleasing before you. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that let your will be done. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, King of Glory. Let us pray now. Mighty Jehovah, the King of Glory, we come before you, Lord Jesus. Thank you because of teaching us the way that we should offer to you, the way that we should glorify you, the way that we should please you. Thank you, Jesus. All the glory unto you. Now we pray through the name of Jesus.
that Father, may you teach us the way that we should worship you, the way that we should offer you, O God, that we may not offer defective or poor and blemished thing in the name of Jesus, that we may not wash abom uh, uh, offer abominable thing before your sight in the name of Jesus. Help us to worship you. Help us to serve you. Help us to worship you, to sing for you. Help us how to pray. Help us, O oh God, in our ministry, that it shall not be considered abominable, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help each and every of us and perfect our gift, perfect our callings, perfect our worship in the name of Jesus. I pray the grace of God upon your life that you may be perfected in the worship. You may be perfected the way you offer to the Lord, the way you worship to the Lord, the way you serve God. Be perfected in the name of Jesus. That any defined thing, oh God, cleanse it. Any blemish, remove it in the name of Jesus. Any sickness in the worship, any sickness in the service, remove it in the name of Jesus. And let them be healthy in the name of Jesus. That we may worship you to glorify your name in Jesus' name. Mighty Father, we pray that you may prepare us in the righteousness of God. In the, in, the, in the perfect way yes. to be holy without uh, without spot or ring or without blemish. Yes. Oh God, but to, to be glorious for that kingdom of God. Yes. Keep on purifying us. Yes. Keep on teaching us, Jehovah, yes. to worship you in truth and in spirit. Yes. Oh Lord, that your spirit will, 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 will teach us, yes. but your word will teach us yes. in the spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus, we do pray and believe. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Get the end time writings of Apostle Simon Geshinga, a humble end time messenger with an apostolic wisdom of the word of God and end times revelations. Preparing the bride of Christ for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in complete holiness and graciousness. Go to Play Store Android application and search Apostle Simon Gishinga. Click and download the application. All messages are offline once you download them. Receive back the ancient word of God reviving the saints for the kingdom of God by inspired living word of God. Search Apostle Simon Gishinga on Play Store application.